Hi, my name is Matthew Fuller, and I'm currently an intern at Mozilla working on web application security on the security assurance team. Today we're going to be continuing our Zap tutorial uh, by talking about some of the settings and options that are available to you within the ZAttack proxy application. So opening up Zap and going to Tools, Options, will present us with a number of options that we can use to configure the behavior of Zap to our liking. So I'm going to be going through each of them for just a little bit and uh, talking about what they do and how they can affect your scanning. So to begin, uh, active scan is essentially a technique that's used by Zap to uh, try a number of known attacks against a target. And uh, it's initiated by the user. But these settings here will allow you to set the number of hosts that you can scan at the same time. Uh, you can also increase the number of concurrent threads that are used uh, on each host. And what this will do, uh, increasing this number will cause multiple threads to be spawned off. However, it will increase the load on both the scanning computer as well as the target application. Um, I recommend keeping it somewhere low, uh, but if you find that it's too slow for you, then you can increase it. But be careful not to increase it too high or you'll be sending, um, possibly overloading the remote application. Um, the delay is essentially the time that's spent between each of the requests. So increasing that will cause the scan to take longer. Uh, Anti-CSRF tokens are used by applications to prevent uh, forms from being, from being submitted uh, remotely without first uh, in being initiated on that particular application. And that makes it difficult for applications like Zap to submit repeated requests as it needs to do during its scans. So what Zap does, it attempts to detect which are the uh, CSRF tokens that are used in the request. And then it revisits the URL that generated that token on each subsequent request. So uh, if your application uses a non-standard CSRF token, then you can enter that here. Uh, the API right now is fairly basic within Zap, but enabling it will allow you to use the API from your browser or from a web application or another application entirely. Uh, setting the applications will add the right-click menu option, and let me just show you down here. Uh, so down here in search, I can right-click and click Run Application and then click Open Chrome uh, because I have Chrome set up here. So if we go back to options, in order to get that to work, uh, you just provide the display name, which is what's on the right-click menu. And then you also provide the full command, which in this case is the full path to the application. Uh, you can also pass it certain parameters, depending on the application, it may take parameters, and also you can capture the output of that as well. Authentication allows you to provide HTTP authentication parameters, such as username and password that will be used and allow you to scan an application behind the login. Uh, brute force, not to be confused with password brute forcing, is uh, the term that Zap uses for attempting to enumerate a list of files and directories within an application from a provided word list. So in this example, you can provide a directory list, and that uh, contains a list of well-known directories and files that are used within many applications and it will attempt to guess and load each of the pages, and it will tell you uh, if it was able to do so. And you can also add your own custom boot reinforcing file here as well. If you're testing an application that uses uh, certificate-based mutual authentication, then you can provide your certificate here within the certificate settings. Uh, also, you can check for updates uh, on startup and the connection settings allow you to specify a proxy if you're using an additional proxy besides Zap. So you can pass your uh, requests and responses through that as well um, by providing an outgoing proxy server here with both an address and a port. Um, and the, the database, uh, you can compact it on exit. I believe this saves space um, if you're saving your options and that kind of thing within Zap. Um, the display, you can configure how Zap's uh, appearance changes, so you can move toolbars around, show the main toolbar, etc. Uh, finally, here in a dynamic SSL certificate, you can provide your own certificate, and uh, you need to do this in order to use Zap with any 
uh, SSL HTTPS websites. So if you view the first tutorial that I created, this talks about the uh, process of setting this up and importing your certificate within your browser. Uh, finally, you can set the encode decode options. If your application uses something besides UTF-8, uh, you can specify that here. Uh, here's the place where you can enable and disable extensions with Zap. Um, and you can also load additional extensions. Uh, you can download those from the Zap website that provide additional functionality to Zap. Here is the option for the fuzzers. You can provide the default fuzzing files. And uh, what this basically does, I'll show you here. If I wanted to just fuzz something here, when I click fuzz, the first box that pops up, uh, this payload XSS is set. So if you find that you're using one set of files more often than others, you can go here within the options and specify that so that it always appears when you first uh, open up your fuzzing window. Um, you can increase the number of scanning threads for fuzzing. And again, increasing this will increase the load on the scanning computer as well as the target, um, but decreasing it may uh, take a longer time to complete the scan. The language allows you to load multiple languages for the Zap interface. And local proxy is where you set up the options for uh, how Zap is configured on which port. So uh, you need to import these settings within your browser, and I walk through that in the first tutorial as well. Finally, the passive scan options here um, allow Zap to read things such as the password object, uh, find forms within the uh, HTML responses that are sent back. You shouldn't need to edit any of these, but if you are an advanced user and you find that your application um, perhaps does something a little different than the standards, you can specify these options here. Uh, Zap has a small port scanner built in, and you can increase the number of uh, threads that are used for that, and also the uh, maximum port to scan. Uh, finally, session tokens. If your application uses a non-standard session token, you can provide the name of that here so that Zap can keep track of that session token. And those tokens show up here uh, under parameters. And if you go back to the tool options, um, the spider increasing the maximum depth off, will increase the number of URLs that the spider will follow uh, before stopping and reverting back to the beginning. Um, again, threads, increasing them is a higher load, decreasing them takes a longer time. Um, finally, you can also check an option here for post forms, and that will follow the action within an HTML form and try to load as many different pages as it can. So that's all there is to the options. If you have any questions about this or run into any trouble, leave a comment on this video and we'll try to help you out. Thanks for watching and be sure to stay tuned for future tutorials on using Zap.